What an incredible Monday. This is a sports solstice, people. Action at every corner. We're going to go. We're going to talk Michigan. We're going to talk Lions. Hell, I may take three minutes later to see if the Pistons can make history tonight, losing 14 in a row. Well, we'll talk a little bit about Michigan State hiring a coach, but we need to lead. You are now three times. I'm, I'm calling it. I'm doing a BOGO. Your three-time defending Big Ten champion, Michigan Wolverines, who once again have proven that they own and Ohio State. They have broken Ryan Day. You broke that man. Yeah. You broke him. It was over at right before the half. Right before the half when your decision was, I'm just going to kill the clock and kick a 52-yard field goal. I'm sorry, what? It's fourth and two. I got this. I got this. But Ryan, it's you just pick up the two. Nah. I'm gonna play this game. So you're just gonna be down by one point rather than down by four. That this makes no sense. So that that is I wanna know what as a Michigan fan your biggest takeaway is from that game. Because it matters. Look, the takeaway could be uh, this was a hell of a lot of fun. The takeaway could be what I take away. I I, I swore that you broke Ohio State last year. And now, wasn't a work of art. Good football game. But there's mentally something they have to overcome. You have broken them. Mm -hmm. And that has to be the greatest feeling in the world as a fan. When you've broken a rival. I told David, because he was like, I, I was hoping for a Ryan Day type of moment eating the sad pizza with, I mean, not Ryan Day, but uh, Urban oh, Meyer. Oh, on the golf cart? And I'm like, you, you, you got that. Because when Marvin Harrison Jr. just sat down on the field, he had a look as if I've been lied to. I was promised a championship, and for three straight years, we've lost this game. I'm leaving Ohio State with nothing. Promises were made. I was lied to, <laughs> and I got nothing in return. Period. This was a game. We've often talked. Like, sometimes, you know, you could swap coaches and they would, you know, the coach would win regardless of whatever team he was coaching. If you took Sharon Moore and put him on the Ohio State sideline, he would have buried Michigan. He was just a better coach that day. He was coaching to win. But it's why I never understood, nor do I understand now, the big deal that was made about Harbaugh not being there. They've never needed him. They have the goods to win the Big Ten. Now, if you want to tell me they need him to compete for the Natty, we can agree on that. I agree. I don't think you're winning it, but we can agree. But this conference, you have the goods. You have the game plan. You have a group of kids who care about their school. Rare these days. You got a group of kids that have done the only healthy thing they can do. They can't be worried about the outside noise. They can't be worried about the, what the adults in the room have done. They compartmentalize it. They're going to rally up and play. And that's what I've told you to do as fans. You have two choices. You can suspend disbelief and just go and enjoy this ride. Treat it as the last dance. Or you could let what you did ruin you. I don't think it's healthy to take choice B. So for me, the takeaway is simple. You own Ohio State. You own Ryan Day. You're one game away from getting him fired, which would be next year. And that has to be the greatest feeling in the world. And as Spartan fans, I know you and I at one point felt it. We had broken Michigan. Yeah. Like, that's the peak of college sports. Can you break a rival? I almost think breaking OSU means more than the three Big Ten titles. There's something about shattering <laughs> but see, OSU after what they did to you for two decades. But see, the beauty of it is... You get both. It is BOGO. That's true. Because you break OSU, and every time you break them, you're handed another title. Ooh, there you go. That is the other one. That is a piece of must-see TV. Tony Petiti handing Jim Harbaugh that trophy. I don't think he'll be there. I don't think I, – I think that whoever his right-hand person is – that's going to be the person up on the stage. He's going to go with the junior varsity commissioner like they do at the draft, Mark Titus? Yep. Like, And now for the second round, Adam Silver yes. can't be bought. No way. Yes. No, Petiti's got to be there. No. Michigan fans are owed Petiti. No, because here's the thing. Petiti will say, I don't want to steal from your moment. And it will. Because we will all be there watching to see what the exchange will be. You know what? 
rise above it, let somebody else hand the trophy off, but TD's not going to be there. He's not going to change. I don't think he gives no that trophy away. Way. No way. We David, deserve it. No, you don't, because it will only take away from a moment that you have. Because Michigan is not going to be able – they're going to be super petty. He's going to be super petty. He may just set it down on the ground and be like, there you go. You deserve that. You won the Big Ten. You deserve all the pomp and circumstance. I would say no. The spiteful people want to see this. Yes. But it's – Well, like for me, it's a roof for radio. It, I oh, it watch, is. I get to watch the world burn from a good, safe distance. It like, is. I kind of just want to see, like, but you hear know, the booze. <laughs> no, but, but at that point, you know that Jim won't just say thank you. He's going to say something back. And now Petiti has to think – it will be the ex- accelerated version of Dave Chappelle's when keeping it real goes wrong because both guys are going to be like, and it could have just ended right there. He can't, but they didn't he, let he it can't stop. Skip out on his first opportunity to hand over the Big Ten title. He's, no, David. No, I'll simply say one oh, word, David. Petiti, COVID. <laughs> I deserve this joy. COVID, Michigan fans I'm deserve sick. this can't joy. Can't be there. COVID. But what is what is the big <laughs> takeaway? I've, you can you can go a number of different directions. And remember the ground rules. I Rigo and I have never said you don't get to enjoy this. You just don't get to tell other people what to what to think right. about it. So for me, it's simple. I hope you watched it with your family and friends and you 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 broke Ryan Day, you enjoy it. And whatever's gonna happen in the winter and spring, that that that's that doesn't matter. Because it's gonna happen. Right. But just know when you say Michigan versus everybody, that everybody hates you. And everybody's not going to be happy that you won, but that's okay. But you can't expect everybody to then say, all right, you're the greatest thing. No, people are going to always question what you've done, and you can't get angry. You can't get mad. It's just like for the championship when Nebraska won half and you won half, and you're like, stop saying we won half a title. Well, uh, they got to let go of that. They got to just live for, for their deal. Like, this is your team. This is what you root for. Enjoy it. It doesn't matter what the outside world thinks, unless you make it matter. But you don't get to tell the rest of the world what to think. Like, you are what you are. And you're a good football team. But I will tell you this. I don't think you're anywhere as good as you were last year. Now, it took a while. And we've gotten to see the body of work of what the Big Ten is and what the Big Ten is not. And if Kyle McCord is the best quarterback that you faced all year, uh, that's pretty damning. Kyle McCord's not good. Kyle McCord is not a big-time QB right now. And I saw some cracks in that defense where, look, it's a great win, and it's a Big Ten championship, and you never have to apologize for it. But the fact is, Kyle McCord had the football with a chance to beat you with a minute to go. In a game that you were plus two in the turnovers, in a game you got some fortunate calls, and he still had the ball with a chance to beat you. That doesn't compute to me. Last year's Michigan team, plus two in the turnover? Ball game. While also knowing the other team's plays. The point is, it just there there's a lack of dominance there. And I felt the same thing. The Penn State game, the 32 runs, it's still 17 to 9 deep into that game. They're good, man. But I don't know if they've got what it takes to beat Georgia. That fifth gear. Yeah, the, the extra explosiveness, the whole bit. The running game lacks explosion. They were able to grind it out. I love the fourth down calls. And again, this is where Sharon Moore, like Sharon is going to be a head coach. See, I, I thought that they had that moment when right after Zinter's injury, then Blake Corm scores. And I said, and here's where the game now ends. And then Ohio State responded. It was like, oh, okay, it's not over yet. I, I thought this was going to be the, fine, the, the death nail. So yeah, they're one of the four best teams. I just, I got to see it to believe it, I guess. I felt more confident last year. I felt more confident because they were on a, they were playing at a level. And again, I can't get out of my head what why, happened and yeah. why they were. I, why I, you it, were playing it. You don't have to like it, but that's how the rest of the world there feels. There will always be doubt for everybody outside of Michigan. But yesterday, Saturday, listen, I, I just, I still have a feeling with this conference, it's stuck in 2005. There's something about the play style that I think if you go to the big stage and you try to do it, I just – and you know what? And it's – I'm guilty. I'm guilty that you've lost the previous two playoff years to where I look at that and I, I wonder, all right, have you changed enough you to ha- get it done? No, and it, but the funny thing is, it's why in the pre-show meeting, Kenny was saying he didn't want to see Ohio State in the playoffs. 
not Michigan, because Ohio State is built oh. for the playoffs. They're built to handle the SEC teams. Michigan, they can't get past. Because Michigan like still plays that same old methodical way, and Ryan Day is just mentally broken. I'm glad Michigan won because I think Michigan will give Georgia a better game than OSU would. This OSU team, this ain't C.J. Stroud. This isn't last year's team. I, I, I looked. Right, but in all fairness, that ain't the same Georgia defense either. No, true. They're all on the Eagles. I think Michigan's more equipped from a toughness standpoint to stand in and play. I do. I think they're, they're some of the toughest sons of bitches out there. They are, they are tough. Uh, you can put all the, the the cheating and scandal. Say whatever you want. Both things can be true. Barry Bonds is a great player before he did steroids. Yeah. Also true. You guys are tough as nails. And that is something lacking in college football. Most of these schools, kids don't care about the school. They don't care about a collective, a team. They are. And look, when the Zinner injury happens, what did they do? That was almost like an inflection point. Yeah. It didn't. They rallied. They, they. It was an energy. And, and again, it's horrible what the happened. Very next play, it was like touchdown. an energy boost for the entire team. Yeah. Of like, we have to do this. No one can take things happening, and 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 make it a rallying point more than you guys. It's a weird thing, but it works. I was about to say, and you know what, Mike? It's almost like what D'Antonio used to do. Every little thing, and yeah. he turned it. Us versus the world, like, wow, you took a, a somebody putting a toothpick in the ground and you rallied your team around that. Good old Joe Bolton. Right. And Spike. Like, what? But, yeah, they 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 scored immediately after. Now, I do wonder, long term, no Zach Zinter, how is that going to affect that line? Because the line was a little shaky, in my opinion. It wasn't the same line that's been there for the last two years. No, I, I like I said, I thought last year's team was better than this year's team. Does that mean anything in the grand scheme? Maybe not. And the beauty of it is you you probably don't have to play Will Johnson in this game Saturday. You can let him rest. I would never. The way they said he was icing his knee down to his foot. You know what? We're going to put you in bubble wrap. Yeah. And we'll see you in four weeks. Yep. We'll see you. uh, You don't even need to practice, Will. You know the plays. We'll see you kick off. If Michigan can get to seven, they're beating Iowa. Deacon Hill is not beating you. (laughs) Okay. That game against Nebraska. Woo! David, here's, David, criminal. Here's the funniest thing. So we're going over. I'm telling Jimmy before the show, like Michigan's favored by, I think, 23 and a half. And he was like, well, what's the point spread? 24? And then we were just joking. He's like, it's probably like 35. It's 35 and a half. That's the over-under. I have, listen, it is not Michigan's fault. It's never been Ohio State's fault. It wasn't Michigan State's fault. Whoever wins the East is winning the Big Ten because it's one of the grossest imbalances in the sport. Now, luckily, it's ending. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, because they listened to the fans and they got rid of leaders and legends, and that's what made it this bad. Yeah. Now, look, for Michigan's purposes, this is a good free square at a good time. Rest Will Johnson. Anyone who's got dings. You know what else they don't need to do this week? You don't need to expose McCarthy to hits. Mm-hmm. No RPOs. Let's be careful on your scrambles. Take it easy. Play conservative. It doesn't matter if you win Three to two. Yeah. It means nothing. Just win. You're good. I think it's coming at the right time for you. I don't know what was going on with the tight end, but yeah, he was going in and out the game. You know what? You're done too for a while. You're sitting. We don't need you for Iowa. You can do what Georgia did against Georgia Tech. Right there. Some healthy scratches, if you will. Guys, you're not playing. In case of emergency, which we should never be down to Iowa. The closest the game should be is 0-0. The only way this is a game, you would have to see something from outer space like Michael Taylor, 1987, with seven interceptions. You'd have to have J.J. blindfolded. I was about to say, you, you would have to have like the opening kickoff fumbled and Iowa gets the ball on the two. Every, t- every possession. Like, right, yeah, yeah. 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 One it's of those not types happening. So, look, I think it's all setting up. Now, this is your third crack at this deal. The first one I never held against you. Georgia was that team. Last year, I held against you severely. That was truly embarrassing, losing to TCU in the manner you lost. This is your third bite at the apple and probably your last. So, what's your confidence level? And what do you take out of the game Saturday? I'm leaving it open-ended. I don't, I don't want to guide it any one way. I know what I take away. You, you've, you've broken that. And it has to feel great. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Get your phone calls. A lot to do today. Michigan to start. Lions. Little word on MSU's new head coach as well. Big Monday. 
in the Motor City. Rico, tell them all about it. 